Hey guys, welcome to Tour Truck Tuesday. My name is Chris Trot, and I work out on the PGA Tour for TaylorMade Golf. One of the things I want to talk to you guys about this week is the loft sleeve. This bad boy is critical to how you set up your woods. The only thing to strike the ball is going to be the loft on the golf club. So this can do so much for your game and what we refer to as dialing in the ball flight. We tweak this all the time when we're out on the road and there's things that you can learn as a player just on your own driver by getting involved in this sleeve. So first things first before we continue, I just want to define roll and bulge. Most drivers have roll and bulge where the toe and the heel would fold away, fold away from the center and help you with gear effect. So if you strike the ball away from the center, the ball will curve back to the middle of the fairway. When it comes to tailor-made clubs, where they differ is they have twist face. And you can see as I'm defining here, the toe and the middle of that card through to the toe peels away more this way and the heel peels away that way. So our faces at TaylorMade are shaped slightly differently. They're engineered a little bit differently to your standard roll and bulge. Why are you telling me that? Why does it matter? Because all of that matters when it comes to the look of the face angle. And when you get into the FCT, the loft sleeve, the adapter, whatever you want to refer to it as, when you move it away from the standard position, every time you do that, you are going to change the look at address of that golf club. And it could even impact what loft you begin with and what you purchase. For example, when we take last season's driver and we compare on the tour apples for apples, I will always look to match up the lofts with a player before I even start. I will cherry pick ahead and I will make sure that if this one on the tour measures 9.2, then the new one that I'm gonna go for them, vice versa, would measure 9.2. Then you are comparing apples for apples before you even start and you know that each click you make will have the same impact. That may not be a luxury you have if you're buying the golf club or you're buying it blind or you're buying it online. So you're gonna to have to dive into this sleeve yourself. In its purest form, as simple as I can say it, you can see that one will say standard, one will say lower, and one will say higher. And you will look at this and think, okay, well, obvious, if I'm hitting the ball high, then I need to move the sleeve towards lower. You need to get in there, unscrew that sleeve, and move the blade towards lower. For the example purposes, I'm gonna go all the way. What does that do to our club then? Well, straight out the gate, you've taken loft off. I've already told you how important loft is. You strike the golf ball with loft. It's the only thing that touches the ball. But now, this card that I showed you earlier peels away further, and the toe of that golf club looks more open. We often talk, you've heard me refer to in these videos, about paint lines. Paint lines are how the white line on the sim driver and the carbon crown, how they peel away or how they come in at the toe. That's something that as a visual and as a good player, you're always going to be looking at. We deal with it all the time with the top tailor-made athletes, Dustin Johnson, Tiger Woods, Rory. They all have an impact on these paint lines. But as I move that club to lower, you can see that the paint line peels away more. So, if you are a person who hits it high, then you would go to lower and you would expect to see the ball come out lower because you're reducing the spin. You're probably gonna lower the spin if you contact in the same place by about 400 revolutions. And when it comes to driver launch and spin and optimization and getting the perfect ball flight and landing it on the perfect land angle, that's all gonna be impacted by moving it towards lower. But you're also going to open the blade. So if you're a golfer that wants to hit it lower but struggles with hitting it right, all of a sudden now, You've got not much loft on, so that'll sort the flight out, but you're going to hit it to the right more because the face angle is going to be open more. So how do you solve that? It's pretty simple. You start with a head that would be lower lofted because vice versa. If you take a lower lofted head and then you get towards the higher position. So let's go all the way around to higher. Let's say this was an eight degree head and I started with eight degree. I've added the loft now. All of a sudden, I've hit the same loft as I would by taking a nine down, by taking an eight up and into the higher side. 
So I'm getting the same height trajectory, but I've changed the way in which the toe and the relation from the middle of this card through to the toe doesn't peel away as much now. I've changed the face angle. So when you set up to it, you can see more loft on this one because this is a nine, but if it was an eight degree head and I was going to higher, now I would end up with the same actual loft as if I'd taken a more lofted head and moved it down. But I'm getting there a different way with a different face angle. So if you're someone who loses it to the right, be very conscious of that. Be very aware of that. Don't just grab the nine or 10 degree or whatever you think you need and move it to lower because you hit it high, but you still hit it right because you're gonna run into problems. You have to work the face angle in with the loft sleeve. Same applies for left. If you hit left and you want to go to higher, higher will change that face angle. It will make the face angle move more to the left. So you'll get the height but you could potentially bring more of the left side in. And that's why they have these tracks, and that's another area you can get into with the movable weight. But the Sim Max doesn't have that, and it can be overruled with face angle and loft sleeve. So then we've got the upright side of the sleeve and how that impacts where we're at. Well, I made a YouTube clip on this all about lie angle and what's called face plane tilt. You're going to change by getting into these blank side of the loft sleeve. You'll change the lie angle and you'll change how it looks. So that's it in its simplest form. But where do we use it on the tour? What are the examples of how we use it? Well, quite often, and it happened at Tory Pines this year, Rory McElroy was overdrawing his nine degree driver. So we took a 10.5, moved it all the way down to lower to put in a face angle, as I've just explained, where the toe would peel away more and enable him to move quicker at the golf ball and get the toe moving quicker so that he could hit free without the left side of the golf course being a concern. Another thing to keep in mind with this when you're fitting a better player or maybe you're a better player yourself listening to this or perhaps, which is very buzz at the moment, you're someone who comes into the golf ball a little bit steep. So the butt of the golf club is pointing at this point inside the golf, when you get to halfway down, inside the golf ball or at the golf ball. It, it, the shaft isn't shallow. If you're that player who's a little bit steep, you will know that to square this up, you have to back up and quite often you would flip. If you start flipping, it gives you what's called flash speed. So you'll see players in this position where they back up, the golf club exit more to the right and high, high hands, but it's flash speed. Those players will hit it a long way. But the way those players need to set up their driver is to have more toe peeling away. Set the driver into lower so the face angle is more open. Another example from the tour with this, we work with a two-time major winning champion and he would like his drivers to be seven or eight degrees open when you sold them on our measuring devices on the truck. And on the range, he would like to see the ball 15 yards right of where he was aiming. And that would be the driver that he would take to the tournament, to the golf course, because he knew under pressure he wanted to be able to release his hands as hard as he could because the way the modern day game is played, as we all know through strokes gained, is distance off the tee is critical. Therefore, if you think about opening the blade up, you can release it harder and the toe becomes the fastest moving part of that golf club. Therefore, it will generate more speed to the golf ball. But the final piece is, and what you must remember, and I think that story highlights it, you should test these out on the golf course. It's all very well doing your fitting environment with a track man, dialing in the numbers, hitting it great on the range, being a puresman on the range, just ball after ball after ball. But you have to take it, be it yourself getting in there or be it a club fitter, you have to take it onto the golf course and dial that in. And that's my final piece of advice on this subject. Remember that the loft hits the ball, the face angle can impact it as a player no matter what your handicap level. Always be aware that when you buy the drive ahead with the right amount of loft on it, you can manipulate that face angle either way. I hope this helped. This is another Tour Truck Tuesday tip. I look forward to bringing you some more of these. Comment below, let me know, and until next time, good luck.